I'm gonna show you a lot of information in this video, so no time for hellos and hooks and intros, just let's dive into the content of the video. First, we're going to talk about practical considerations when comparing PyTorch with TensorFlow. Second, we will compare them on model availability. Third, we'll compare PyTorch and TensorFlow on deployment. Fourth, we'll talk about the differences in PyTorch and TensorFlow ecosystems. Fifth, we're gonna talk a little bit about JAX. I hope I pronounced this correctly. And six, we're gonna answer the question, should you use PyTorch or TensorFlow depending on different cases, such as industry, research, whether you're a hobbyist or a total beginner. I believe this video is gonna give you a lot of information on understanding how both platforms work and it's gonna save you a lot of time researching all of this on your own. So let's go. In the past, TensorFlow has been usually seen as industry-focused, while PyTorch has been research-focused. But both have rapidly evolved, making those older distinctions less relevant today. With the growth of deep learning, using pre-trained models had become increasingly important, and that's why we're gonna compare PyTorch with TensorFlow on model availability. Also, being able to efficiently deploy is crucial, especially in the age of microservices. And finally, deep learning is now used across different industries, making it very important for the frameworks to have robust ecosystems, including hardware integrations. Overall, the debate is not about which platform is the best one, but it's about understanding which one aligns more closely with your specific needs and workflow. In 2023, you are likely to hop on hugging phase because it makes it possible to incorporate trained and tuned state-of-art models into your pipelines in just a few lines of code. Hugging phase Hub is a platform with over 300,000 models and more than 60,000 datasets. When it comes to TensorFlow, it offers over 9,000 models at the time, but almost 130,000 models for PyTorch. Considering that the majority of all available TensorFlow and Keras models are already available for PyTorch as well. Looking at publications by authors that were using either PyTorch or TensorFlow in 2018, 2019, we see that 55% of authors who had used TensorFlow in 2018 migrated to PyTorch in 2019. By the way, this graph is available on Assembly AI website, which is a very informative blog for AI. Overall, the conclusion as far as availability and trend goes is that PyTorch is leading despite the release of TensorFlow version 2. One important exception is JAX, if I'm pronouncing this correctly even, used by Google Brain, and we're gonna talk about this a bit later in the video. But to give you an idea, in 2020, Google Brain announced that they were using JAX to accelerate their research. DeepMind also created Sonnet, which is a high-level API for TensorFlow that is tailored towards research and sometimes called the research version of Keras. On the other hand, OpenAI standardized the usage of PyTorch internally in 2020, but their older baseline repository is implemented in TensorFlow. So TensorFlow still holds some slay in the reinforcement learning community. Developing and training large language models is half of the work. Deploying those products into production and managing them is the most difficult part. And the short version here is that TensorFlow is better than PyTorch in deployment. So let's say a few words about TensorFlow Lite, which is a tool used in most Google projects. Having been tested on over 1,000 Google projects, TensorFlow Serving is capable of handling millions of requests per second. It is used for deploying machine learning models on special specialized gRPC servers and provides remote access to them. Model deployment with TensorFlow service is highly flexible and it also integrates perfectly with Kubernetes and Docker. When using TensorFlow serving, it's easy to update an already deployed model and also to roll back any earlier version of the deployed model without having to shut down the server. The tool is designed for industrial production environments and is a good choice where performance is a 
concern. While 10% increase in the runtime might not mean a lot to a researcher working with those frameworks, it will definitely save a lot of money to big organizations. TensorFlow Lite is tailored for mobile and IO devices. It addresses constraints like latency, size, and power consumption, and it supports a range of programming languages. PyTorch obviously has been working on closing the gap in deployment, introducing Torch Server and PyTorch Live to facilitate easier deployment. Torch Server is a flexible model deployment tool and with a basic set of features like a model archiver tool, a server, metrics, logging, an API endpoint specification, and model snapshots, Torch Server attracts most of the business cases. The latest version of Torch Server also supports Hugging Face, NVIDIA WaveGlow, AWS CloudFormation, and others. PyTorch Live builds on PyTorch Mobile and focuses on deploying models on mobile devices through JavaScript and React Native. It aims to provide an end-to-end -end workflow for Android, iOS, and Linux. Overall, while PyTorch has been the to-go deployment framework, PyTorch is definitely catching up. And one thing to mention here is on an X, that is great for those who prefer TensorFlow's deployment capabilities but need access to PyTorch only models. On an X can serve as a way to port models between the two frameworks. Ecosystems. PyTorch offers a variety of specialized libraries and platforms that make it attractive for diverse applications, from computer vision, text to speech, audio processing, to running models on TPUs you got options. Let's go over now the 10 most popular libraries and tools. PyTorch Hub is an official repository platform for pre-trained models optimized for research. It hosts a variety of models across domains like audio, vision, and NLP. PyTorch XLA is a package that facilitates the training of PyTorch models on Google's cloud TPUs. It acts as a bridge between PyTorch and Google's XLA compiler. Torch Elastic is a collaboration between AWS and Facebook, and this tool manages distribution training, coordinating worker processes, and handling issues like server maintenance to prevent loss of training progress. Torch Text is specialized for natural language processing, and this library includes frequently used datasets and data processing utilities for NLP tasks. Torch Audio is PyTorch's official audio library, boosting models like deep speech. It offers walkthroughs for tasks such as automatic speech recognition. SpeechBrain is another open source speech toolkit for PyTorch. It provides features like ASR, speaker recognition, and even sentiment analysis. ESPNet is an end-to-end -end speech processing toolkit built on PyTorch. It aligns with Caudi's data processing style and supports tasks like speech recognition and translation. TorchX is an SDK for quick building and deployment of machine learning applications. It supports launching distributed PyTorch jobs and integrates well with Torch Elastic. Torch Vision is the official computer vision library for PyTorch, providing model architectures and datasets for CV projects. Lightning, known as the Keras of PyTorch, simplifies model engineering and training, making the workflow more object-oriented and reusable. Also something very important to add is that in 2023, PyTorch released PyTorch version 2, where one of the significant modifications is the Torch Compile. This is a feature that improves PyTorch performance, and one of the most useful techniques here is the Torch Inductor, which is a deep learning compiler that uses OpenAI Triton as a key building block. TensorFlow, of course, has its own suite of tools and repositories, making it adaptable for different requirements. So let's now talk about those. We have the TensorFlow Hub, which is a treasure trove of pre-trained models that are ready for fine-tuning. It has models for various domains, including image, text, audio, and video. Model Garden is a repository containing the source code for various state-of-art models. It's beneficial for those who need to customize models beyond just fine-tuning. Extended TFX is an end-to-end -end platform geared towards model deployment. It covers everything from data loading to model deployment, and it's closely integrated with Google Cloud. Collab is a cloud-based notebook for both 
TensorFlow and PyTorch, and Collab offers free GPU and TPU access for model training. It's like Jupyter Notebook, but for better Google Cloud integration. MediaPipe is an open source framework designed for building multi-platform machine learning pipelines. It supports a variety of applications like phase detection and object tracking, as well as multiple languages, including Python and C++. Coro is focused on onboard local AI. It's a Google product that offers hardware and software solutions. Coro aims to address challenges related to privacy and efficiency, making AI more accessible for edge computing. Vertex AI is Google's cloud new unified machine learning platform that aims to consolidate various services into a single ecosystem. It's particularly strong in automating, monitoring, and governing machine learning workflows. And by the way, there is a free course on how to use Vertex AI by Deep Learning with Andrew Eng, and I'm going to leave the link to the video I made about this as well. TensorFlow GS provides the power of TensorFlow in JavaScript, enabling browser and server-side machine learning tasks. It's great for those with web development background. When it comes to datasets, TensorFlow has a repository of datasets curated by Google Research accessible through dataset search. But it's not exclusive to TensorFlow and it can be used by PyTorch as well. Let's now say a few words about JAX. JAX is a Google backed numerical computing library and it's rising in popularity and it might be a strong contender in the future of deep learning. It adopts a functionality pure approach different from both PyTorch and TensorFlow. And this functionality pure approach might be a barrier or a boon. If the industry adopts it, it could be a game changer. In general, it seems like the future might not be between PyTorch and TensorFlow, but PyTorch version 2 and JAX. Finally, if you're still right now right here debating between learning more specifically PyTorch or TensorFlow, let's talk about a specific case depending on your context. If you're already using TensorFlow in an industrial setting, it might be wise to stick with it, especially given its advantages in deployment and monitoring. However, keep an eye on PyTorch for future projects. Overall, PyTorch offers a more dynamic and user-friendly environment, making it ideal for new projects, especially in the research domain. Through tools like OnNX, it's possible to develop in PyTorch and then deploy using TensorFlow, allowing you to leverage the strengths of both. PyTorch is largely considered the to-go framework for research, and the release of PyTorch version 2 further solidifies its standing in the research community. TensorFlow has specific advantages for those working in reinforcement learning, thanks to its agents library and DeepMind's ACME framework. JAX is emerging as a strong candidate for future research, particularly if you're interested in functioning programming and TPUs. If you are a hobbyist, and if you are focus on implementing deep learning in a project, then TensorFlow is advised, especially for IOT embedded systems. If your goal is understanding the fundamentals of deep learning, PyTorch is generally better, particularly if you are comfortable with Python. And for total beginners, Keras is recommended for its high-level user-friendly components. And then you can either drop down to TensorFlow from Keras or switch to PyTorch based on your comfort and objectives. I hope this video helped you navigate in the different deep learning frameworks that exist out there. Thank you for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.